Hello. Um, so, first of all, I want to say to my uh, my so-called audience, uh, a lot of you uh, <laughs> got up in arms that about the uh, condescending uh, viewpoint of, of the camera. What I think is con condescending is that it's condescending to yourself that you want to be an audience and you want me to professionalize this in some way, right? As if I'm some important person and, the, and that you're some person who paid money for a ticket to this shit. But anyway, I uh, welcome very much if you would like to buy me a tripod or even a camera or a, a bookcase or some more books that I can stack my, my laptop on top of so I'm not so condescending <clears throat> to you. But anyway, if anything, I am more like your patient. Except analysts don't do patients. They do analysts and analysand. Analyst and analysand. Because they don't uh, like to play the BDSM game of doctor and patient. Anyway, I have a little bone to pick here because I was talking to a Freudian colleague, much smarter than a Freudian, but uh, most Freudians, but but a Freudian colleague nonetheless, and she said something which I noticed Freudians say. Uh, they use the word uh, neurotic to describe someone who has a uh, neurosis, who someone who has symptoms, someone who is crazy, right? Lacanians don't really do that as far as I know. We basically see everyone as neurotic unless you're psychotic or perverse, and even those are not set categories are not set nosological distinctions right because <clears throat> saying that some people are neurotic implies that there's such thing as normalcy right it implies that there's such thing as non-neurotic and uh that just doesn't seem to be the case there are people who are very have less neurotic problems but no one's normal right this, in this way, Lacan is, as Lacanians like to say, more Freudian than Freud, which, speaking of condescending, that is the most condescending, prick, uh, pretentious thing to say, <laughs> okay? Both of the guys are dead, and you're saying, because I'm Lacanian, I am more Freudian than Freud, and Lacan was more Freudian than Freud. That just means that your symptom is being a prick. Um, but it's okay. I, I, know it's, I know it's rough. Um, anyway, so what would your illness be if you are neurotic, which is everyone? Your illness is the, first of all, it comes from a disease, a disease, a disease called language that is given to you by your mommy and your daddy. Okay, that disease of language predicates the worst disease of them all, being sexed. And yes, it does happen. It's not just make-believe, okay? But notice that that happens after you're born, which means that psychoanalysts agree with you spectrum everything people that you are not born with a hard gender but you are born with a hard sex at least 99 percent of you but that gets problematized with the oedipus complex but the oedipus complex for lacan is essentially a linguistic entity, how you relate 
to your mother and your father or other entities that stand in for your mother and father through the way we know how to as human beings. How do we make concept? How do we attach meaning to things? Language. Okay? So language for Lacan essentially sexuates you. But not language per se, right? It's it's not that I'm not talking about direct language. So it's like someone tells you you're a boy or you're a girl, though that can happen too, and it will fuck you up. But it's how language itself predicates your epistemology, how you get to know the world, and how you are in relationship to the original object choices, people choices. I don't know why psychoanalysts refer to them as objects, but it makes sense if you get into psychoanalytic keys. Uh, language becomes epistemically bound into how you know knowledge. So when we say essentially, and now I'm not even speaking for Lacan or for Freud, to be honest, I haven't read Lacan in about three years, and I'm very glad that I have not read Lacan in three years, because now I no longer speak Lacanese. And you know what? I don't even know if uh, these theories are coming from them. But I don't care to quote them anymore, unless psychologists from UCLA want me to do so. Um, Okay, language because essentially structures your being, which is also predicated on sex, right? The biological part of sex meets up with the epistemic part of language. The two components that make you human. Well, actually, it's the only the language that makes you human. The sex part makes you part of the species. And that gets predicated during the Oedipus complex. And you will notice that there is a binary between those who get predicated as a hysteric female, for the most part, or male obsessive, for the most part. Now, again, we can go in and out of these epistemic territories, but let's just treat it as a cliche. You will notice in life that men, and when I say men, I mean obsessives, which could be a biological man or woman, tend to predicate their speech in a way that always tries to re reduce what they're saying to an argument or a, a logic-oriented argumentation. One of the ways that men historically have tried to pretend, and notice I definitely say pretend, to be smarter than women is by saying, oh, women, you can't follow our logic, read obsessive, circuitous language, therefore you must not be as intelligent as, a, as us. Well, the hysteric woman, but again, doesn't have to be a woman or a man, but, but binary nonetheless, the hysteric tends to have much more open-ended language. Much more, it has a, a fluidity to it that is you could say it has more empathy to it. It doesn't always finish itself, though. It's not always so sure. It's not always so logical. Which does not mean it's less intelligent or less right. And now, without a, without a theoretical foundation and a lot of time to explain that, that is going to sound very reductionist and you know, misogynist and, and whatever. <clears throat> but if you leave aside the fact that I'm saying, you know, that men speak this way, logic-oriented, and women speak this way, non 
less logic oriented. You can at least see and that I've said that sexuation is predicated on language and to a lesser to extent hard biology. You can see then how gender for the psychoanalytic understanding, at least the post-Lacanian understanding of it, is very fluid, but uh, a binary nonetheless. And so, yeah, that's something about gender, and it's also something about this thing I think Freudians get wrong, this, this idea that Freudians have that there are non-neurotic and there are neurotic. Now, everyone's neurotic unless you're you have psychotic, unless you are predicated via the Oedipal stages as psychotic or perverse, that's something else I'll touch upon later, but everyone is neurotic, right? Either hysteric or obsessive to some degree. And that is something that Freud hardly touched upon, this thing of those who are not neurotic, right? There's, but there, that was very easy for Lacan and everyone to, to dismiss, right? There's no non-neurotics, there's no normal person, okay? There are people with more or less symptoms than others. And the point is, is that sex itself is a symptom. And that sex is predicated on language. So language predicates your, your being symptomatically via one of, the, one of these uh, two logics, which we can call more paternal or more maternal. And notice I don't say feminine or masculine. I say paternal or maternal. That's where biology becomes important. And yes, you can be a woman in a paternal role, as we see all the time with the United States obsession with equality, which just means sameness and put women who happen to be paternal on the top, right? Nothing's changing. The patriarchy can be run by women as well. Or you can be a maternal uh, man. Often see it in gay, gay in homosexual male relationships, for example. Of course, they can't have kids, so they don't have that aspect of maternal. Notice that I say maternal and paternal and not feminine or masculine. Um, maternal logic, paternal logic, that's the binary. It's predicated on sex, but then gets complicated by language. And that's really what psychologists, that's really what I hope to bring from Lacan to mainstream psychology, right? They think that well, Freud did invent the talking cure. But the point is, as Lacan pointed out, Freud didn't talk about the very tool he uses, namely language itself, how language characterizes our epistemic nature, our thought. And the next argument you see between couples, watch this. You will see the circuitous, now it's called mansplaining, of the obsessive against the hysteric who is trying to show more than she can say. But the problem is logic fails when you're communicating in non-logic-based language, such as so-called body language. It also comes across in speech, but because it's not as uh, predicated on rational logic, it's been denigrated over the, over the course of the time. Um, everyone's neurotic. Thank you. Spasiba.